Area Zero has some of the coolest Pokemon of all time, and is one of the most unique locations in the franchise. So today, we're back with a new shiny hunting challenge, where we have to catch every single Pokemon in Area Zero in their shiny form. A challenge that seemed simple and fun at first, but ended up becoming one of my hardest video ideas I've ever had. Alright, so here's a list of all 67 obtainable Pokemon in Area Zero, minus the Scarlet exclusives. And my goal for today is to find every single one of them shiny. The only rule is, they have to actually be caught in Area Zero. Although shiny hunting in Gen 9 can be really easy, don't let that fool you. Because the amount of time I've spent trying to complete this challenge is beyond what I planned for. I can without a doubt say that I know Area Zero better than probably anyone who will ever watch this video. And outside of whatever Game Freak is cooking for the DLC, I don't think I'll ever want to go back to the crater of Paldea again. Oh, and did I forget to mention? There's actually a shiny in Area Zero that I believe has never been found before. Also, if I forfeit the challenge and give up at any point, every shiny I do find I'll be giving away to you guys. So please throw a Master Ball at that subscribe button to help me on my journey to 100k and let the hunting begin. My first target for this video was Lycanroc, a Pokemon with an absolutely great shiny, but one that's not the easiest to find in Area Zero. Now, some important things to note about this place. One, there are no outbreaks, which makes it much harder to target any specific Pokemon. And two, there are basically six unique biomes throughout the crater, each with their own pool of Pokemon it can spawn. So how we focus a certain shiny is by finding where they spawn and using an encounter and shiny boost sandwich of that Pokemon's type. So with my rock type boosts, we kept an eye out for the blue dog. However, he's actually a slightly rarer spawn than other rock types, which made the hunt harder than expected. Almost 30 minutes in, we came across our first shiny for the challenge. Nackly! I absolutely love this Pokemon and no stress getting him instead, seeing as we're currently working with a blank slate. However, the game just insisted I kept getting Knackly, because over the course of two hours, I came across another three shinies of him. Yep, I've already got that one game. How about something different next time? Well, technically I got what I wanted. Maybe I wasn't being specific enough. How about a shiny Lycanroc next time? And yet again, the game provided. Thank you, it's about time. To change up the scenery a bit, I went to find a shiny Glimmer in the underground caves with the remaining time on my rock boosts. It was a pretty quick hunt and then we evolved our Glimmer and Knacklestack into Glamora and Garganical. Also, FYI, we're not taking the Living Dex approach to this challenge, so the previous evolutions will still be ticked off the list. Here's a quick visual update on our progress. We'll be checking in on this from time to time to see how far we've got to go. Okay, so at the start of the video, I kept saying how difficult this challenge was, right? Well, that difficulty ultimately comes down to what I'll be calling the three cursed hunts. Essentially, there are three shiny hunts in Area Zero that caused extremely evil and unexpected issues. And we're about to move on to our first of the three. This one nearly drove me to insanity, the hunt for Vaporeon. What was so sinister about this search was the fact that even with the best water type boosts, Vaporeon would almost never spawn. If I were to guess, I'd assume she has a 1% encounter rate with the rest of the spawns being allocated to Golduck and Buizel. This was torture. Finding regular Vaporeon was proving to be a difficult task alone, with me sometimes going four to five minutes without ever seeing one. So imagine having to get one shiny. Considering Golduck and Buizel were around 99% more frequent than Vaporeon, I have grown an undying grudge against them. Not just because of the amount of time I've been exposed to them, but because of just how many shinies of them I found before that purple fish fox. All I can say is I think I have the world record for the most shiny Golducks and Weasel found in Scarlet and Violet. Thirty-one hours, forty shiny Golduck, twenty shiny Weasel, six shiny Floatzel, and one shiny Iron Bundle, with no shiny Vaporeon. This hunt was absolutely ridiculous. And what's crazy is I might not even be halfway to finding it. Now I'm not usually one to take breaks from things because I like to get things done then and there, before starting something new, but I just couldn't deal with this anymore. I barely had any Pokemon ticked off the list and just needed to do something different. Shiny hunting Vaporeon in Area Zero is just pure evil. All I can ask is for you to critical capture that subscribe button to cure my pain. Alright everyone, taking a break from that hunt and seeing as Dunsparce can be found in Area Zero, I think it's time for another Dunsparce Evolution Session! The reoccurring segment to my shiny hunting videos where we evolve a shiny Dunsparce until we manage to get that 1 in 100 3 segment shiny Dunsparce instead of the regular 2 segment. However, we're changing the formula. From now on, we'll be evolving 5 shiny Dunsparce, so this series won't take roughly 100 videos. Attempt 1. Nothing. 
nothing. Attempt two, nothing. Attempt three, still no. Attempt four, not quite. And attempt five, no luck. Come back next video to see the next five attempts. Next, I decided to move on to hunting a shiny I really like, Jump Luff. They spawn almost everywhere with grass type boosts. And thankfully we managed to find the little pink fluff ball in around 35 minutes, which was nice. After that came the hunt for Chansey, who spawns in the cave where you find Iron Valiant. Weirdly enough, even with using encounter boost sandwiches of certain types, the cave for whatever reason didn't remove other types from spawning. Yeah, you'll definitely get boosted spawns for your type, but around 30 to 40% of them were still the regular Pokemon of the area that don't even share a type from your sandwich boosts. This caused me to run into a shiny Gravid, but I was pretty happy about that, seeing as the only way to find a shiny is if you get close enough for him to actually come out of the ground. I evolved him into Houndstone, and after a total of two hours spent in the cave, I finally came across the green egg creature. Very nice. My hunts were very dependent on what I felt like going for at the time, so the order was pretty random. I then went for a shiny giraffe rake, seeing as they're super easy to spawn a bunch of, and upon finding him in only four minutes, we turned him into a Ferrigaraf. Okay, this next target I was actually really worried about, Floette. She is absolutely tiny. Now I actually thought Flabebe could be found in Area Zero, but luckily I was wrong, because she's even smaller than Floette, and the shiny is a lot harder to spot. But despite my worries, I managed to spot the amazing purple flower baby in only around nine minutes. Absolutely love this shiny. And I then decided to hunt for our first Paradox Pokemon, Iron Jugulus. Despite him being the only spawn with encounter boosts, he took around an hour and a half to find. We were now 50 hours deep into the challenge, and here's an update on what we've got so far. Alright, I think it's time for part 2 of the 3 cursed hunts. The hunt for shiny Corviknight. Now at first, I thought this was going to be one of the easiest hunts in the entire video, considering he spawns almost everywhere. But for some reason, it honestly felt like he was shiny locked. Starting off the hunt, I did luckily run into a shiny Murkrow randomly, which I evolved into Honchkrow, and then found a really cool shiny Braviary literally 2 minutes later. I was quite worried about getting a Braviary, seeing as Corviknight was the more predominant spawning flying type, but luckily we got him early. Now, this is when the pain of the hunt started to kick in. I managed to find a really good spot to spawn a bunch of Corviknight right outside of the third research lab. However, the shiny just didn't exist. I went over three and a half hours circling the perimeter with just no luck. The shiny drought was soon broken, but it wasn't by the armored bird I was looking for, but another braviary. There were actually so many times my brain tricked me into thinking I found a shiny because of the lighting making him look slightly different, but his shiny is a very obvious metallic silver, so clearly that wasn't it. Then wouldn't you know it, a third blue Braviary then appeared an hour and a half later. I just don't get it. He was spawning significantly less, yet he was the only shiny I could find. And of course we came across our fourth one another hour later. Okay, I'm gonna call myself out here before you do. Because yes, it generally took me up until now to realize that I should be making steel type sandwiches instead of flying type to get rid of the Braviary spawns. But don't clown on me too hard because I just assumed it had spawned a bunch of Paradox Pokemon. Because you know, they're all robots. So my brain just assumed most of them are steel types. But thankfully a majority of them aren't. And the Braviary spawns were no more. Another two hours passed. And then I finally managed to come across the Silver Bird. But just take a look at this. Excuse me? Wait. Was it shiny? I actually can't tell anymore. Am I hallucinating or something? Because I could have sworn that was gray a second ago. So I called him down to encounter him, and it turns out, yep, that's shiny. Like what? If shiny Corviknight is not in direct sunlight, which there was almost none of where I was hunting, he not only loses his obvious gray coloring, but he also looks near identical to the regular ones. Which means all those other Corviknight I thought looked different from earlier were probably shinies that I would have dismissed for looking way too similar to the regular ones. Okay, I get it. Seeing the shiny among the regulars isn't impossible to miss, but when you're looking for this color palette, you really can't blame me for not being able to tell. It was just such an unexpected issue that I never thought I'd be running into. Alright, I think it's time to rapid fire a couple of things, because I don't want this video to drag on for too long. My next hunt would be for Iron Hands, because they spawn pretty much everywhere. He didn't take too long to find, and then I tried hunting for a shiny Tadball. Unfortunately, he only spawns on the outskirts of water, meaning I was back at the Cursed Lake. And that is a shiny Golduck. Please just leave me alone. In the process of looking for Tadball, I managed to find a shiny Raichu, which was super useful. Then another Boizel. And finally, after a little over an hour of hunting, I was lucky enough to spot the very subtle change. And then I evolved him into Belly Bowl, who will forever have one of my favorite shinies. I then randomly came across a shiny Pormi, who became a poor Mo. And then literally two minutes after that, a shiny Lockix, when I was seeing what Pokemon would spawn where with a dark type encounter boost. That led me to finding a beautiful shiny Sneasel, which is one I also really like. Continuing with hunting in this 
cave, I wanted to get a Doug Trio next, and I found myself with a second pink Sneasel. Can't complain though, because it's a really good shiny, who I evolved into Weavile. Okay, so Doug Trio was a pretty crazy hunt, actually. Something happened that I've been dying to see for myself, and that would be spotting a shiny inside of a wall. Yep, that's right. I was only just able to spot their blue noses poking out of the wall, and using the lock-on feature, you're able to move the camera into the walls to see them. Although I can't exactly walk into them to start the battle, I can either throw my Pokemon at them, or they can get close enough for me to connect with their hitbox. I actually love how broken this game is. Time for another progress update. Things are looking pretty good. Fanfy was up next, and was another Pokemon exclusive to the tiny rocky area, but it only took 20 minutes to find, and thankfully I was actually able to spot it with how weird the lighting is and how little the shiny changes. I then evolved him into Donphan, and we also came across a shiny Gibble whilst using the rest of my ground type boost. So we evolved him as well, and what happened next, whilst I decided to move on to hunting for a shiny Pornyard, I am still in disbelief about. <gasps> oh my god! We got the shiny Vaporeon! What the f- it, What? We got it! We, we actually got it! What the hell? No way! Let's go! It actually happened! Shiny Vaporeon in Area Zero! I couldn't believe my eyes. And not only was I not hunting for it, I didn't even have any water type boosts on for encounter rates or shinies. This was probably one of the craziest shiny hunts I've ever done. And somehow I completed it when the hunt was on hold. Now I know I have seven Master Balls from the old duplication glitch, but I haven't really been using them on anything. However, I can without a doubt say that this is worth using a master ball. It even matches with the shiny too. My happiness for not having to go back to this hunt was unreal. However, the final of the three cursed hunts was soon to be upon us. Anyways, I think we're hunting shiny Pornyard, right? I can't even remember with how insane that was. Okay, so Pornyard was unexpectedly a pretty difficult target. Why? Well, because for whatever reason, even with dark type encounter boosts, Bishop would spawn way more commonly, seeing as Pornyard would only spawn in the rarer clutters. So after an hour and a half of searching, we unfortunately got a shiny Bishop and of his pre-evolution. Yes, it's a new one and a great one at that, but seeing as you can't de-evolve Pokemon, the hunt was still on. And yeah, we're actually gonna be here for a while. I then came across another shiny Corviknight, who was much easier to notice this time. Then another Golduck, then another Floatzel, followed up by another three shiny Bisharp. And perhaps I should have classified this as one of the cursed hunts, because the list just keeps going. Next came our third Corviknight, then two more shiny Bisharp, then yet another Corviknight. Then for once, we finally found something new in the form of a shiny Masquerade, which was a nice change, but the repetitiveness came back strong. With a shiny Weasel, yet another Bisharp, and then we had our first shiny fail for the challenge, which is basically tradition in my shiny hunting videos at this point, where a red-beaked Golduck spawned and despawned almost instantly. Yeah, I'm not even remotely phased at this point, get that thing out of my sight. But it turns out he was revived, because he came back just to annoy me a few minutes later. After totaling almost six hours of hunting, I finally came across the baby blue knife boy, which took way longer than I expected. Our progress was looking pretty good. 68 hours had passed, but we still had many shinies to find. Cufin was our next target, and was pretty similar to Fanfy from earlier. Not too hard, despite the subtle change in its shiny. It became a Copperaja, and then Venomoth, Iron Moth, and Espathra were also easy targets, who each took no longer than 15 minutes to find. We then ended up at this evil lake, yet again, in the hunt for a Flamigo, who spawns around water. And to no one's surprise, the hunt was crashed by another two shiny Weasel. Getting the Flamigo totaled around two hours, and thankfully there were no shiny Golduck this time. Next, I decided to hunt for my favorite Paradox Pokemon, Iron Valiant, who is actually like half an inch away from becoming my favorite Pokemon of all time. I'm just growing more fond of it every single day. This was a hunt I've done plenty of times already, so I knew it wouldn't take long. Only 20 minutes went by before the Silver Valiant was crossed off the list, and we then moved on to another fighting type, Halucha. He has a super recognizable shiny, so there were no issues finding him. We then went on to hunting Go-Goat. However, in the process of looking for him, I not only bumped into one, but two extra shiny jump off. After eventually finding the shiny mountain goat, we also had no problems during the hunts for a Volcarona and a Talonflame. Going back to how weird the lighting of Area Zero is, Numal was greatly affected due to how reflective they all were. But before we found him, we actually got a shiny camera up instead, shortly followed by a second Volcarona. And just look at this! Look how hard it is to tell he's shiny. But thankfully I was paying close attention, so we could tick him off. Returning to the water yet again, we had two dragon type targets, Dreepy and Swablu. Our shiny Dreepy literally took three minutes to find, considering they would spawn a lot more commonly than Swablu, and it definitely wouldn't be the only one we find. Over the course of almost three 
hours in search of the yellow cloud bird, we ended up getting another three shiny Dreepy and a shiny Dracloak. It was actually starting to get really annoying with the ridiculous amount of duplicates. But thankfully, the golden Swablu finally decided to show up and we evolved him into Altaria. Metatite was also pretty unique in its hunt, seeing us that Spawn and Clutters are four with a Metacham in the middle, but we somehow ended up finding a shiny Metacham who was all alone. This one looks so good, but it's just weird how he was on his own and we were 80% more likely to find a shiny Metatite over him. But that's not all because we got him a second time in a row with an Iron Hands who was clearly out for blood. Speaking of the devil, literally one minute later we found yet another shiny duplicate of him. Not even five minutes had to pass before we eventually got the red metatite. And on the topic of duplicates, whilst I was beginning to look for Frostmoth, he showed up again. Get out of my life! Also, with ice type encounter boosts, Iron Bundle was distributed way more than the Ice Moth, leading me to encounter not one, not two, not even three, but four extra shiny Iron Bundles. I was like a magnet for them. The hunt totaled a little longer than two hours before I finally got the green tinted frost moth. So close now, only five Pokemon remain. I then hunted for an Espeon by setting the game to daytime and using a psychic encounter boost inside this cave. However, due to random luck, we found ourselves with another Gibble instead. The alien looking evolution was found half an hour later and then the little yellow goblin 60 minutes later. This was actually my first shiny save line in this game, which was surprising because I really like it. It was then time to tick off the final two Paradox Pokemon, starting with a really glitchy Iron Treads, who for whatever reason literally had no animation when encountering him. And then after hitting him with an attack, he would grow to like 10 times his size. He was in fact so gigantic that the camera wouldn't even keep the model loaded in. And I'd only see him briefly after escaping the Pokeball or for a couple of frames after landing an attack. Never change Scarlet and Violet. With one more Paradox Pokemon remaining, we begun our hunt for the Iron Godzilla. And would you look at that, yet another shiny Iron Hands. 30 minutes went by and we eventually found the epic silver robot Tyranitar. And just like that, the challenge was complete. Completed. Or was it? You see, I mentioned that there were three major cursed hunts for this video, right? Yet only two have been shown so far. Have we missed someone? Well, in fact, there is a shiny Pokemon we are still yet to find. A simple Pokemon who goes by the name Umbreon. You may have heard of him, but what you probably haven't heard of is the reason I believe this to be the hardest shiny hunt in all of Area Zero. In fact, it's a shiny so rare that I believe it has never been found before. You see, unlike Umbreon, I actually found a total of four claims of people who found a shiny Vaporeon in Area Zero through four tweets on Twitter. However, I am yet to find a single documentation for a shiny Umbreon from Area Zero, and I think I know why. Umbreon is a really rare spawn, who from my experience was spawning even less than Vaporeon. Not only that, but it only spawns in this tucked away cave we've been seeing a bit throughout this video. A place that for whatever reason doesn't remove the Pokemon of other types different to your encounter boost sandwich. And finally, to add a cherry on top, it's a nighttime exclusive spawn. And let's just say, adjusting the time is nowhere near as easy as as it was in Legends Arceus. In simple words, this hunt is objectively harder than Vaporeon. And for that reason, I think it's best I just throw in the towel and surrender. Although we got extremely close to finishing this challenge, this hunt probably would have taken me another 30 to 50 hours to complete. And as much as I'd love to show you guys me completing this nightmare of a hunt, it would have only caused me a bunch of stress, extreme boredom, and would prevent me from getting this video out sooner, so I can continue to work on more fun and exciting shiny hunting videos for you guys. So I hope you understand. Stand. Anyways, a rule is a rule. So every shiny Pokemon I did get and actually saved into my collection, I'll be giving away to my subscribers as my punishment. Besides that Vaporeon. I'm sorry, but after the pain I went through to get this, he'll be the only one I'm keeping. Anyways, if you want to see more fun shiny hunting videos, make sure to subscribe and click on one of the videos on screen. I hope you all enjoyed and thank you so much for watching.